Greetings humanity of the world. Humanity on the internet. And all participating members. We are anonymous. Low wage workers will participate in a nationwide operation on April 15, 2015, and they will be asking all Americans to support their efforts to push Congress to increase the federal minimum wage to $15 per hour. According to the organizing group, the Fight for 15 will include fast food employees, retail employees, child care workers, home care providers, and airport workers. Notably, the operation is expected to include Walmart workers in addition to McDonald's workers, who helped drive a similar operation of fast food employees last December. There will be rallies in multiple cities across the United States, including New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. The organizers expect as many as 60,000 people to participate in 200 locations. They are also pushing the movement beyond the United States borders, and confirm that there will be action from workers in Italy. The momentum is growing to increase the minimum wages. Retail stores such as Walmart and Target have announced increases in their company's minimum wage, although the new $10 minimum are well short of the $15 per hour. Other retailers, such as the Container Store and Costco, have stood out by paying workers well above the minimum wage, and even providing benefits in some cases. At McDonald's, the average worker makes just $9 per hour, and more than half of McDonald's workers receive some kind of government assistance. It is very hard to live on this salary, said a McDonald's worker, Jameer Culhoun, age 30, in an interview in December 2014. You pretty much know that you start in the red. As soon as I get my check, I already know that it is not enough. So I have to take care of what is the most pressing matter at that time, and then think of ways to fill that financial void. So far, though, McDonald's has not indicated any willingness to increase pay. These events are not strikes, but organized operations designed to garner media attention, for which demonstrators are transported to various locations, Edie Barkasashekham, a McDonald's spokeswoman, told the New York Times. Historically, very few McDonald's employees have participated in these organized events. Here is what McDonald's workers had to say. I work at McDonald's downtown Los Angeles. I've been working there for four years. Uh, I've been uh, working for McDonald's for about two years. I have 10 years working for McDonald's. I've been working on McDonald's over six years. I want to strike today because, first of all, it's my right to strike, and because I have a daughter at home that deserves better. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. It is very hard to live on my current salary. Before I even get my check, I'm already in the red. There's probably not an odd job that I haven't done. It's every single thing that I can do to provide for my home. Sometimes I could work 27, if I'm lucky, 30 hours a week, but in this time it's really hard to work 30 hours a week. Right now the holidays are coming and it's hard for me because Christmas is here, my son was a Christmas tree. I don't, I can't even afford all of that. I got two kids, that's really hard to tell them I, I don't have the money for you, can you wait until the next paycheck? McDonald's is getting rich and we still live in poverty. McDonald's cares a lot about their public image. You know, they show you people smiling at the commercials and everything, but they don't show you the reality. Behind every smile, there's someone dying and suffering inside. We want $15 and a union, the, the right to be able to talk to these companies and sit down at the collective bargaining table and hammer some of these issues out. We just hope and we just pray for the support of everybody out there because we're fighting for our lives and our futures. I'm here for my daughter, I'm here for my family, and I'm here for fight for a better future. Politically, the fight to increase the minimum wage has picked up steam. Last November, four states, Arkansas, Alaska, Nebraska, and South Dakota, passed minimum wage increases. Seattle, San Francisco, and Chicago have all passed municipal minimum wage increases as well. Would an increase in the minimum wage kill a lot of jobs? 
Most studies say that typical increases in the minimum wage, usually for a few dollars, will not hurt the economy or lead to massive job loss. This is according to the Chicago Fed, the Los Angeles Economic Roundtable, and the Center for American Progress. Some studies, like one from the Congressional Budget Office, project small job loss. Others, like the Center for Economic and Policy Research study says that states that have increased the minimum wage have seen stronger employment growth than those that have not. Overall, according to the Department of Labor, a review of the dozens of studies on the minimum wage have not found a discernible effect on employment. The biggest problem with the current federal minimum wage seems to be its declining purchasing power. Adjusted for inflation, the purchasing power is less than it was in the 1960s. Between 2009 and 2012, according to Pew, the federal minimum lost about 5.8% of its purchasing power as a result of inflation. We are anonymous. And we will win. So, expect that. <laughs>